and and actually it's important to us as politicians, it's important to us as people. You know, who makes the decisions? Is it an, are decisions to be made nationally, are decisions to be made locally? And you know, and you sort of think, and I mean, I'm a localist, and but I mean, I think I'm, I mean, like all true localists, I know my limits, and. I think localism today is one of those kind of fashionable words that gets banded around. Everyone knows what it means. It's a bit like kind of motherhood and apple pie. You know, you can't, how can you be against it? It's all about bottom top. It's all about community, democracy, accountability, giving power to communities. I mean, who could be against that? And, 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 and can I say, not me, not me. I mean, uh, when I, when I um, was in the top 20 on the private members ballot, and was able to put forward a bill. I promoted localism and democracy in the management of housing associations. My bill basically gave housing association tenants the power to call their housing association to account if their estate was failing, and to put their estate into special measures. And if the housing association still didn't sort it out, it gave them a nuclear button that would allow them to move their estate to another, another housing association. That'll make sure they get listened to. And yeah, I'm not, a lo I'm not, you know, I'm not against localism. But I know that there are a number of pitfalls, and I think we mustn't kind of get carried away. I mean, one of the one of the, the problems is that we have to make sure that that in encouraging localism, we are not just giving the decision making to the usual suspects. You know, we have to be really careful about the structures that we use. I mean, I know Demos calls them the golden one percent, but there's another. I mean, you know. I call them other things, you know, and they could be called local busybodies busy as well. You know, why should that 1% be making the decisions on behalf of the other 99%? I mean, I had a constituent contact me recently, completely enraged at the fact that there had been a decision to block off their road and to make it a private one. And they went over to my local Lib Dem council and said, what's going on? And the Lib Dem council said, oh, 100%, we had a consultation, 100% of people were in favour of it. And he said, well, how many is that then? He said, six. And as a result, the road had been blocked off, and they were the only six that had responded, and so therefore they made the decision. I have to say at this stage, during my speech, I will be talking about the Lib Dems quite a lot. And so if you are a Lib Dem and you're kind of yellow-hearted, go to the bar and come back in 20 minutes. Um, but I mean, in light of this sort of nonsense, you know, it is very important that the government does promote, I think, things like citizens' juries that do ensure that we actively seek the views of people, and we do it properly, and not just those who are pushy enough to answer a consultation. But another pitfall that has to be avoided is the pitfall about local power also means local responsibility, right? You can't have both. You can't have local power and still moan, like Hull Council. You know, like Hull Council, who, who despite government advice to take out insurance against flooding, didn't do so. And then when there was a flood, <laughs> came to government and said, we want more money. I mean, you have to, if you want to have responsibility for, for making local decisions, then you have to take responsibility, you have to take both sides. Hull Council's Lib Dem Council. But we can't abandon equality, which is another point. You know, I mean, one of the other problems about localism is, you know, some areas may be particularly poor, and if, and if, we, if we don't do, if we don't make decisions on a national basis or a regional basis, then poor areas become more entrenched in terms of their poverty. And we've, we've sort of debated that quite a lot about you know, having this, like, a supplementary business rate across the whole of London and ensuring that, that the money is moved around. You know, why should it be that Kensington and Chelsea have a lot of rich people who are able to tax, are able to then spend it locally? Why can't that money then be transferred into, into transport um, systems that will, that will help the people of Hackney? The other point I'd say, another pitfall to be avoided with localism, is that you have to have power at the right level. I mean, take planning in London. If you ask Londoners if they want more affordable housing, they resoundingly say yes. And they want to give Ken more powers of planning, and they want to make sure that he has the power to make sure there's enough affordable housing for Londoners, right? And, but I, unfortunately, you know, when left to their own devices, localist politicians can be too easily swayed by the stroppy minority. Like, another example, okay? In, in Old Street, in my constituency, there was a proposal to put up a tower block, right? And instead of refusing this tower block on the basis that it made no serious contribution to our appalling affordable housing crisis in Islington, with 13,000 families on the waiting list, my local Lib Dem councillors refused to make a decision on the basis of the 13,000 on the waiting list, but instead refused it on the basis of a, of a, of a few stroppy people who turned up to say that the tower block was too high. You know, 
you have to ensure that if you are going to be making decisions, you're making decisions properly and you're making decisions in a representative way. And the problem is sometimes is that decisions are too localised, particularly on issues such as planning. You can get a few people having an adverse effect on something which is actually for the interests of all of us. So, it seems to me that in order for localism to work outside of meetings and earnest leaflets, we have to be realistic, we have to be pragmatic, and we have to be responsible. And quite frankly, some localists are just not prepared to do that. Localism should not be a block on collective action. It seems to me that it shouldn't be an excuse for protecting narrow vested interests over the needs of the wider society. Now, climate change affects us all. Climate change doesn't care who makes a decision about what. The carbon is the carbon. We have to make a decision collectively. We have to stick together on this. And we cannot, we cannot run away from our responsibility. I mean, sometimes that therefore means that we can introduce planning guidance across the whole of the country. Sometimes we can loosen up restrictions. Um, but I mean, like, just sort of biting the bullet on this. It seems to me that democracy is not about giving people a veto. What we should do is we should make decisions collectively, right, and we should be involved in making those decisions collectively. But on major things like tackling climate change, we have to make those decisions collectively. And if decisions are made that we don't like, we don't like them. You know, there are, there are decisions that may, that may be made, for example, in relation to nuclear power, that I'm not exactly enamored with. But if that decision is made collectively, then we have to stick to it. And we have to do this collectively. And we have to stand up to this, because in the end, we cannot allow localism to be an excuse for us to be NIMBYs and to not take our responsibility. I've got another quote. So Mick Campbell says, uh, this party and this party alone is, co is committed to deliver action against climate change. In England, in Wales, in Scotland, the Lib Dems are fighting, leading the fight against climate change. That's what they say. Wind farms. Rochdale MP Paul Rowan opposes building of wind farms in his constituency. Why does he oppose wind building wind farms in his constituency? Have you heard this one before? Because it uses too much concrete. He says that he's got lots of other things that can be used instead, but he doesn't actually tell us what they are. Okay? There are many of these sorts of things, this kind of contradictions. And you know, one of the problems about localism is that it allows politicians to get away with saying one thing nationally and saying something else locally, a complete contradiction. And this sort of hypocrisy cannot be allowed. We have to take responsibility. The, the biggest, I think, indictment of this sort of behavior, I thought, came from, from the chief executive of Friends of the Earth, who waded into the political row about the congestion charge in Edinburgh. And he said, Sadly, the Liberal Democrats in Edinburgh are campaigning against a yes vote. They're besmirching the national, the national party's much vaunted green credentials for the sake of short-term political opportunism. It is a shame that a rogue element within the city have led the campaign against a scheme that many of their own members want, and that would deliver so many benefits for Ed Ed Edinburgh residents. We challenge those parties that have congestion charging as part of a national policy to come forward with a workable scheme as part of their manifesto for the 2007 elections. Labour, the Liberal Democrats, the SD, SNP and the Greens all have all supported congestion charging in their national policies. The test is whether parties are prepared to do more than talk a good talk. So far, the Lib Dems and the Nationalists have manifestly failed in that respect. But this is what goes on. This is what goes on. And of course, localism doesn't just mean incons inconsistency between national and local parties. It also means that despite, our, despite the size, you can, have, you can have a party doing saying one thing on one side of a road and another thing on another side of a road. We have to ensure that we don't allow this sort of thing to happen. I'm not saying that I'm against localism, because I absolutely am. But I am against us not standing up to our responsibilities of collective action, and I am against political hypocrisy.